when are you finally gonna quit social media? You've been on this thing for so long. You've heard that it's bad. You know that it's bad. And you're spending wasted potential every single day, hours on end, watching another person's life. But don't worry, you are not alone. I got my first phone at 11 years old and I was instantly hooked. I had four hours of screen time instantly on YouTube and eventually that expanded into Snapchat, Instagram, and TikTok. I remember specifically one day I was waiting for my mom to pick me up from track practice and I thought that it would be fun if I checked my screen time because I hadn't in a while. So I opened up my screen time and it said eight hours a day and I was absolutely devastated. I knew that I was ambitious. I knew that I was different, but I couldn't seem to get myself off of this no matter what I tried and there wasn't any kind of full guide on YouTube back then detailing exactly how to get off of social media. I've created that guide. Social media is ruining your life. Think about all the time that you could be spending on business, working out, walking, reading, and yet you spent that cooped up doing nothing. Imagine if you spent all the time that you have on social media on something productive every single day. Where would you be in a year? You would be in a very, very good position. I can guarantee you that. You would have a business started. You would have a lot of knowledge because you read books. You would have a great physique because you worked out all the time. You could be doing all these different things to make your life so much better, and yet it's all spent on a screen doing nothing. You are missing out on what life has to offer because of your phone, and I'm going to show you exactly how to get off of it. But first, I need to tell you a bit about how this video is going to work. This video isn't like other videos. It's going to be actionable. You're going to have to take certain actions to get the most out of this video. So make a promise to yourself right now that you're actually going to incorporate everything that I say, because if you do, it will literally change your life. Now that you've said it, let's see if you can actually keep promises to yourself. Drop down and give me 10. Um, I'm actually very serious about this. Actually drop down and give me 10. This is not a joke. If you do not do this, you are actually a pussy and you should not be watching this video. Okay, so don't be a pussy, go down and do those push-ups. And if you do, then you will get the most out of this video because you've just created momentum for yourself. What we're going to do is that we're going to start out with the most surface level tips and tactics to get off your phone. And then we're going to go deeper and deeper into the less known and more important stuff. And trust me, at the bottom level, it's the most overpowered tipper tactic that you're ever going to hear, so stay tuned for that. But trust me, all the other tips are very important, so don't skip around the video like a loser with zero attention span. So at the surface level, at the very tip of the iceberg, we have phone settings. A while back, I did a dropshipping store and I was really into dropshipping. I was really trying to figure it out. And I was working on this one dropshipping store that basically sold these things that you put into your shower. It's like a phone case that you can put your phone inside and you can tap through the screen. I know it was for people with crazy phone addictions. But anyway, while I'm working on the store, I hear a buzz to my right. I look over and my phone's right there. So naturally I pick it up and I check my phone. Turns out that it's a YouTube notification for my favorite influencer. So I click on the notification and I watch the video. And I finally finished the dropshipping store after one week, but there's a catch. The dropshipping store looks like absolute shit and it took me an entire week to build it. What could have been done in one hour, it looks like, was actually done in an entire week. And that's because of my distracted work. And the funny thing is, is that that entire scenario could have been completely mitigated if I just took two minutes to change my phone settings. I'm gonna show you those right now. This is only for iPhone, by the way. If you've got an Android, you can just look up how to do these things. Number one, turn off all notifications. Just do that by going into settings, hitting the notifications button, and just turning off everything. The reason we're removing all notifications is because most of your phone pickups are because of notifications. You know, you hear that phone buzz, you open your phone, you see that it's from TikTok, and then next thing you know, you've spent the last two hours scrolling. So if we remove those notifications, then both your productivity will go up and your screen time will go down. Number two, turn your phone black and white by typing up color filters, clicking on it, and then clicking on color filters again, and then clicking on that little tab and that'll turn your entire phone black and white. This is probably going to be difficult for you and 90% of people will turn on the black and white and then in a day or a week, they're going to turn back on color filters. But I want you to push past that urge because what's going to be more stimulating, the outside colorful world or a black and white object. So do that right now and the rest of this video should be in black and white. Lastly, if you really think that you can control yourself, set time limits on each app that you think is really detrimental. I'm not going to go into this because it's gonna take a long time and that's just like a tutorial for an entire video. But yeah, once you change these settings, quitting will be so much easier and it's going to make the next couple of steps a lot easier. 
The first thing that I realized when I quit my phone was that I didn't know at all what to do in my free time. I didn't have any kind of habits. I didn't have any kind of hobbies. So I was just kind of lazing around. And of course, I went back to my phone because of course that's super boring. So I'm gonna solve that with this tip. Number two, distraction. So what I want you to do for this is whip out a pen and a piece of paper. And we're gonna go through this together. You can pause the video right now so that you can grab these two things. Okay, so now that you've got your piece of paper out, you're going to label it. And I took this from a guy called Leon. I basically stole it from him, but I am giving him credit. So at the top, you're gonna label it safety net habits. Essentially, you're going to brainstorm a list of the habits that you can do when you have nothing else to do. And you're going to talk about every single habit that you can possibly think of underneath the sun. Not the bad ones, obviously, I'm not talking about jerking off or smoking or anything. So for example, that can be walking, that could be business work, that could be like reading or working out, right? Or it could be like a genuine learning session on YouTube instead of the ones that you're doing right now. Okay, so I've got a list right here of some things. But it doesn't only have to include these things, okay? It doesn't have to be incredibly beneficial, you know, self-improvement habits. It can also be things like climbing a tree, okay? It can be things like going outside and just doing some push-ups, I don't know. Like seriously, anything that your creative mind can think of, put it on the list. Anything that you think will kind of be entertaining or beneficial, like talking to someone at McDonald's, I don't know, put it on the list. Pause this video right now so that you can extract everything from your mind that you can possibly think of, of things that you can do in your free time. Now these are called your safety net habits and we're going to go into how to incorporate them in the next point. I'm working on my calculus. Okay, I'm in the very last stages of editing. Like I have literally everything. See all of that stuff, see all those effects. I realized that this story is super, super, super boring. So I'm gonna tell you something else. So I'm working on my calculus homework. I'm really bored. I hate integrals. I experience a buzz on my phone and it's a Reddit notification. So I pick up my phone, click on the Reddit notification and it turns out that it's one of the subreddits that I'm currently into. And the thing about this subreddit is that it's kind of like some posts are normal, some posts aren't. This post was not normal, okay? I saw a fire poker going up someone's dick. Okay, and if you think that that's a joke, I, I wish that it was a joke. I'm going to play the video again. I'm going to go back into the video and act like this is the story that I just said. What I didn't know was that I experience an internal trigger. And if I notice that internal trigger, and if I reverse that internal trigger, then I would be able to work on my calculus homework without distraction. It's pretty funny because when we scroll for the longest period of time, that's usually when we don't intend to scroll for that amount of time. Think about it. You're not just sitting around and thinking, huh, I wanna scroll on YouTube for two hours. I wanna go on TikTok for three hours straight. No, what you do is that you just check it and then you get caught in the loophole. So you might be wondering right now, what exactly is an internal trigger? An internal trigger is an emotion or feeling that you feel that reverts you to social media activities. Okay, so that could be just plain boredom or it could be sadness, it could be stress. It could be a desire to escape or shitty daily schedule and if we manage to reverse those internal triggers that means that we can seriously reduce your screen time because that means if we reduce those internal triggers that you don't experience as many urges to pick up your phone so i'm going to share with you the three-step method to reversing those internal triggers there's a strategy that a tech designer developed called the 10 minute rule his name is near al i think that that's how you pronounce it and basically he's part of the reason why you're so addicted to your phone because he's one of the people who actually created the different kinds of softwares, the different kinds of algorithms that keeps you hooked. But luckily because he's created this, he also knows how to reverse it. He also knows how to unmanipulate yourself. So what he created was the 10 minute rule. It's basically a rule saying that when you experience an urge, that little internal trigger, you wait 10 minutes to go on your phone. You tell yourself that you're gonna wait 10 minutes. The point of it all is after 10 minutes, there's a chance that going on your phone might not seem that appealing once you actually give thoughts to, hey, I'm actually experiencing an internal trigger, you know? So yeah, that definitely helps, but I'm going to add on to that. Don't spend all that time just like thinking and stuff. Go back to your safety net habit list. Look at your habit list and think of the thing that you want to do instead of going on your phone and go and do it. Okay, so here are the three steps in order next time you experience an urge. And write these steps down because you really have to memorize them. This is very actionable. Okay, so number one is to firstly realize that you're feeling that urge. 
realize that you're feeling an internal trigger. Realize that you either feel boredom or you feel stressed and you're reaching for that phone. Because if you don't realize any of that, then you're just going to go onto your phone and you're going to scroll as usual. Step number two is to literally speak out loud for best results or you can just say it in your mind if you don't wanna seem weird. I am not going to go on my phone for 10 minutes and actually value your word and actually go through with that. Number three, go back to your safety net habit list and do one of those things immediately. Don't tell yourself that you're going to go on your phone for a minute because we all know how that'll end up. Number four, the bottom of the iceberg is mindset slash identity. And if you change this, then basically your entire screen time will change. It will go from the top to the bottom as long as you do it right. I've saved the saddest story for last and this really hits me hard. It's the most impactful and I've saved it for the real ones who actually watch my videos to the end and the people who are actually taking the different actionable steps that I put inside of this video. I know that many people can actually identify with this. Every single day after school, I would always eat my food and I would always watch YouTube videos. It was always, you know, all those stimulizing videos, all the stimulizing business videos, Andrew Tate, you know, maybe I would be scrolling on TikTok. And during this time every day, my mom would come into the door behind me and she would always try to spark conversation with me. And I was, I would always just brush her off like she was some dust. And every single time, just in a depressed manner, she would walk away because her own son was fucking rejecting her. her own bitch ass loser son was rejecting her. And if you act like this right now, if you are brushing off your relationships and giving into the dopamine habit right now, you are a fucking disgusting loser. I'm going to say it right now because nobody else in your real life will tell you this. You should be disgusted by yourself. Those people gave you life. Those people have a genuine interest in you. Those people gave you a roof above your head and food in the fridge to eat and you treat them like shit. And nobody will tell you this, but I will happily because I'm telling you out of the kindness of my heart, okay? This is what I had to learn when I was in that position. I needed somebody to tell me when I was just being a little bitch. I should be accepting my parents and I should be accepting their company whenever I get the chance because these kinds of different interactions, they won't last forever. And that's just the truth. So I don't believe that the worst thing that you get from your phone is the materialistic possessions. You know, you can't start your business. You can't get a good physique. You cannot get a good relationship, not only with your parents, but with anybody. You will not be able to cultivate the different relationships that you want, the relationships that you love, the relationships that every human being strives for you will instead replace that with people on a screen who do not even know you. That is the true detriment of having a lot of screen time. So essentially you might be very confused on what changing your mindset and identity is. And don't worry, I'm going to explain it to you. If you genuinely identify as someone who does not go on social media, you won't go on social media. And that goes with everything. If you genuinely believe that you are not the kind of person to do these different habits, you think that they are disgusting and you literally convince yourself every day, that is disgusting to me. I don't understand how anybody would do that. Then you will change and there's no doubt about it. Now we're gonna go to my room so that I can explain to you exactly how to do this. Okay, so as I just said, you need to switch your entire mindset about social media. So instead of thinking of it as you quitting just this fantastic thing, putting it on a pedestal, think about it as something that's disgusting to you. Think about it as something that is not good at all, something that is ridding you of your potential, something that is ruining your life. Think about it in all those kinds of ways and think about how would like anybody do this kind of thing? It's so gross. How could anybody be addicted to this kind of thing? It's so gross. Stop thinking that you're addicted and start thinking that you just don't do it. See, this is your identity shift. This is you switching your different beliefs about social media so that you can rewire your brain for success. And this is the most powerful thing by far that I've seen in all my clients. What you need to do is that you need to switch your beliefs. What you're going to do is that you're going to write down an affirmation paragraph. It doesn't have to be super long. It can even be just two sentences, but you have to have a mantra that you live by related to social media pushing you away from it. I'm going to give you an example off the top of my head. Social media is disgusting to me. I never go on it. I do not understand how anybody could go on it because it is a loser activity and I am not a loser. That's just an example. 
and it could be anything else. Just essentially what you think is the best way to gaslight yourself and to switching this belief, that is how you do it. And I really hope that you take this advice because nobody really talks about this on social media and me and a couple other people are the only ones talking about this. This is probably some of the most powerful information on quitting your addictions. And I mean, don't call it a conspiracy theory or anything. But what if like the big YouTubers don't actually want you to quit the addiction so that you keep watching their videos? I'm I'm just spitting out ideas here, okay? Okay, so I've saved this last part for the real ones. They're just three little goodies, three little hacks, three little quick tips that I'm going to glaze over so that you can get the most results out of trying to decrease your screen time. Number one is accountability. Something that I do with all my clients is that I give them a prompt to complete every single night, basically sending me a message telling me how their day was. And that's so impactful because when you have someone that you must tell the truth to about every single day, before you go on your phone, before you masturbate, before you take a vape hit, you think in the back of your mind, I'll have to tell him about it. I'll have to tell my accountability partner about it. And it's way more motivating to quit it when you know that. Quick tip number two is journaling, okay? And not just any kind of journaling, a specific kind of journaling that will not only decrease your screen time, but also decrease the amount that you do every single dopamine activity and increase the amounts that you do the activities that you want to do. And this specific type of journaling is reflective journaling. Basically looking back on your day and seeing the exact things that you could have improved on. And then at the very bottom, you're going to tell yourself, these are how I'm going to improve these things tomorrow and get into that cycle, get into that rhythm of doing that every single day. And over time, you're going to find a very positive progression. And then quick tip number three, instead of taking information from YouTube, take information from reading. If you're really nervous about missing out on all this information, there's a very good way to consume YouTube videos. And if you want me to make a video about consuming YouTube videos the right way, which I know a lot about because I've taken a lot of good information from YouTube, then you can let me know in the comments below if you'd actually like a video like that. But for now, I'm going to tell you that reading books, no matter how you consume the YouTube videos, I do not give a shit, is always better than YouTube videos. Books always take precedence over YouTube videos, okay? I don't care what you say, there are too many benefits to books that you are missing out on if you only watch YouTube videos. Okay, so keep those three tips in mind. Hopefully you wrote them down so that you can remember them all during this journey and stick with me right now because I just wanna say some quick final words at the end of this video. Okay, so finally, great job implementing everything and I'm very proud of you for doing that. Think about it. And most videos you just sit down and consume, you don't actually implement anything. And I really hope that you're proud of yourself for that, for actually taking action during this video and planning to take action in the future, which you will do, you'd better. So again, I'm very proud of you, but the work is not over yet. You're going to experience this level of motivation for the next couple of days. And then as usual, it's going to subside. It's whether you act on that motivation or not. And if you do not act based on motivation levels, then you will make it to your dream outcome. If you liked this video, my channel name is him, not because I'm him, but because we're all striving to be him. And hopefully I can get you to that dream character as quickly as possible with my teachings. So if you like that kind of message, then do subscribe. And if you're watching to this point of the video, then you're probably worthy of the key. It's in the description.